Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, that was on dog camp, I swear. Uh, welcome. Today, we are going to be doing a quick review on some of the champions available this weekend and what I think of them. So let's not wait. Let's get right into it. Dallin. Dallin is the highest cost regen champion in the game per minute. So what this means is if you like the strategy of out-tempoing either the content or like your opponent in certain things, uh, Dallin does have a place in this game. Uh, all you have to do is invest skill dust to get this plus two cost regen and the cooldown on this is obviously very helpful, but she ends up out uh, giving you more cost per minute compared to champions like Narvi. And Narvi is somebody who I have used extensively on my account. I still use her up through my gear raid 18s and even some of my 19s. So this is a champion that if I got, I would be really excited for. Now I will say Dallin, I will argue, is a playstyle champion. Um, in terms of stats, she does have some weaker stats compared to a lot of the other fighters because her big gimmick is her cost regen. It's her giving you the ability to summon more heroes more quickly. So if you're looking for a big bulky fighter, she is really not it. However, if you're looking for cost regen, she's going to be fantastic. Next is Theowin. Now Theowin is kind of the one I'm least excited about. However, I will say that when I fully awakened my Theowin, I use him a lot, almost to the point I might use him more than Eadril. Uh, Theowin's slow that he puts on and the fact that he's a huge AoE champion I, I end up using him quite a bit. Uh, I still use Eadril like on bosses over Theowin. However, if it's just general content, I do actually lean much more towards Theowin than anybody else. Uh, he loses no damage to have uh, these slows in his kit and his, his slow effect is 50%. It's very, very noticeable. So Although I'm not excited for this, and one of the biggest reasons I'm not excited for Theowin specifically, is that you can just fuse him. You can fuse as many copies of him as you would like. However, I will say, getting extra copies of him is not bad. Uh, so here, uh, your Awakening 1 does decrease their movement speed by 75%, so that is a very big increase on the slow. I'm going to skip over the damage ones, but at 2 and 4, we have damage and attack speed. Uh... Triggering, triggering a large saber restores 50 rage. Very useful on him. Let's him, lets him get back to that ultimate even faster. Um, and then finally, the range on this. So when you first throw it out, it's kind of like a two by two radius, roughly. Uh, it is not very big. I could argue it's maybe a three by three. I highly doubt it though. When you fully upgrade him to rank five, and this also goes for light lock, the range that these champions get feels amazing and it's one of those things that i feel like if theowin started off with this awakening five he would be a top contender side by side with Idril. next we have hollow now i do not have hollow on my account however my guild leader cannot stop singing hollow's praises uh hollow is not only a fantastic single target healer but during her ultimate, she does get the ability to heal an extra target. And then probably the most important thing about her is that she actually has a rage regen mechanic in her kit. So as you need to buff up your champion's rage uh, percentages, she ends up doing, she, she ends up putting in a whole lot of work. So I am personally excited for Hollow. I do not have her. I will also admit I'm getting to the point I don't think I actually need Hollow anymore. Uh, I've got, I've started getting some legendary healers and they are starting to be very well defined where hollow is just not going to have a place on my team, unfortunately. However, if you do not have champions like Laurel, if you do not have a good healer, uh, pulling for hollow, I would argue is a very smart choice. Uh, what I mean by a good healer, if your only healer is the epic light lock, or if you can, like, let's say you have no epic healer and you can fuse light lock, uh, hollow is going to feel amazing. If you have champions like, let's say, Vortex or Nasande, uh, she is still going to feel very, very good alongside of them. However, you might not be instantly in love with her. 
Uh, I will say though, she does have the same range as Vortex. So although Vortex is kind of our best like single target healer, and then Nisande's ultimate makes her like one of the best AOE healers in the game, uh, Hollow having this rage regen, I think makes her very, very good. Very, very fascinating champion. So next, we have Alora, right? <coughs> I'm going to go through uh, her kit in a little bit more detail here. Um, the other champions, they've been out for a while, so that's why I'm not going into them in greater detail. Or I have a series called Evaluate the Epics, where I've probably evaluated them, except for Hollow. Hollow's the one I haven't touched. Um, so anyways, when the ultimate is not activated, remains in the invisibility state. This stops her from being targeted, which is a very, very good thing. Uh, her defenses are a bit low. They're 888. That's not very low, though. Uh, she, like, her defenses for a piercer are surprisingly fine. Like, they're, they're not bad at all here. Um, your offensive numbers are perfectly great. Your attack speed is at 2. That feels great. So, her cost is 12. Uh, a little bit higher than your, like, 11 marksman, but she's legendary, so I like that as a balancing thing. Deals 100% damage to one enemy, prioritizing airborne units, and the scale's up to 120%. So, very good numbers there. Um, I am a little sad, though, because to see so many skill crystals being able to land on your A1, not what I want to see, per se, uh, but we'll, we'll see how everything else goes. Increases crit rate by 10%, so very, very valuable to promote her. If there are no allies in the adjacent tiles, increases her crit damage by 20%. And these numbers scale from a 10% crit rate up to a 15% crit rate. And your damage crit damage scales from 20%, scaling up to 35%. So very, very interesting that she's kind of meant to be more of a loner champion this, I would also argue, like, for things like Dragon, is going to make her uh, maybe not as powerful in Dragon because your placement for her, you're going to want her to be a tile away from everybody. And in Dragon, kind of one of the best strategies right now is to have everybody condensed for Dolores buffs. Um, it doesn't make that make her unusable, but does make it a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, really cool passive. Scattered Shots, during the ultimate for each critical hit landed, deals 60% damage to two targets within 1.5 tiles of the initial target. So I will admit, without being able to see this tested, I do not know if by 1.5, they mean the tile that the enemy is on, and then 0.5 around that. That makes the most sense to me. But if it literally is the tile that the champion is on, every adjacent tile, and then like a 0.5 in addition to that, that feels like it would be incredibly broken. Now, by incredibly broken, I would say for anybody who gets Alora, that's going to feel absolutely amazing. Uh, it just feels a little too powerful. So I really hope it's the, the first one, not the latter. Um, the damage does scale from 60% damage up to 80% damage. So very useful. Her ultimate is called Burst Strike. Uh, so the cost of it is a thousand, which is a little on the high side. Um, I do have a Rage Regen video. So if you're curious about that, go watch the Rage Regen video and it better explains why I make a note of this cost on the Rage. Uh, when triggered, loses the invisibility state. Each attack changes to two strikes in a row and damage to airborne units increases by 45%. Uh, so each attack changes to two strikes in a row you're doubling her damage output, right? So that feels amazing. This lasts for 15 seconds. So 15 seconds of you doing double damage feels good. Uh, with the passive of having extra crit rate and crit damage feels very good. And then the fact that she can kind of be AOE feels great. I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. The one thing I'm a little less excited about, she feels 100% designed around flying targets, which makes her overall usefulness a lot less however against flying targets you are going to have the day of your life so in things like gear raid 3 your marksman promotion um certain content in the void rift those that have the airborne enemies she's going to feel absolutely brilliant other than that i'm i'm a little underwhelmed by this kit 
I like that it is very focused, so I'm not trying to take away from Alora, uh, but it's it's strange compared to a lot of the other legendaries I've I've seen them coming out with lately. Uh, maybe this is a design choice to be like, hey, we we do need better AOE uh, marksmen for Gear Raid Three, and I don't think that's a bad design choice. So the extra damage to airborne units can increase from 45% up to a total of 60%. And then the skill cost can go from 1,000 down to 900. Again, 900 is still a very long time to wait for your ultimate. So uh, her having a fast attack speed will feel really good. Um, so things like attack speed and rage regen on her could be useful stats. Uh, obviously attack speed, absolutely. Rage Regen, you'll have to watch the video. Um, I, I have very mixed feelings about Rage Regen at the moment. And next for Constance. Constance, I think, is the champion everybody is going to be stupidly and wildly excited for. Um, I personally am so beyond happy that Dolores, of all champions, finally has competition in this game in Constance. So, Constance, I am massively excited about. And aesthetically, I'm not really into the Holy Knight concept. This looks beautiful, though, right? This this looks phenomenal. What I also like about this is it's not, like, super sexy, but it is buff lady sexy, right? Like, she looks badass, and her badassery makes her look sexy. It, she doesn't need a giant V-neck showing off her boobs in this. She doesn't need thighs showing to be like, oh, she never takes damage. Uh, this is a really, really good design choice. Whoever designed this champion, uh, massive bravo to you because this looks like an upgraded Muriel. And it's like if you combine the Epic's Muriel and Dolores together. So without further delay. Her talent, when being healed, the hero restores 3% rage. This effect can be triggered one time every two seconds. So really cool that she's a defender, and then as she gets healed, she gets a benefit from it. But that that is only the basic concept to it. Uh, let me talk about her stats real quick. HP, she's actually a little bit on the low side compared to where a lot of other tanks are. However, because when we go looking through her kit, we're better going to understand that. One of the other massive things to understand about her specifically, she has a very high defense and a very high magic resistance. Uh, I'm going to compare her to Azur, who has the highest magic resistance of defenders in the game. Uh, I don't remember what his is off the top of my head. Uh, chat, can anybody tell me what uh, Azur's uh, magic resistance is? Otherwise, we'll just do it at the end of the video. Uh, but this is why, like her HP is so low, is that her MR is so high. She's going to feel like an amazing all-around tank in pretty much every situation. And then, like I said, she's kind of like Muriel, so that means she's a tanky healer. So, her basic attack grants attack-based healing to one ally in range, restoring HP equal to 60% of the hero's healing multiplier for the ally. When the hero blocks an enemy, she stops healing and strikes one blocked enemy, dealing 100% damage. So she is a healing, healer in her downtime, and then when she actually starts blocking, she starts attacking back. Uh, as you skill her up, you get bonuses to the healing multiplier, so from 60%, scaling up to 80%, and then the damage to your single target goes from 100% up to uh, 120%. So very, very, very fascinating A1. I absolutely love this. The utility of it is going to be the big reason people want to pick this champion. And I love that it's not like your typical defender of like, oh, it just attacks everything, blah, blah, blah. Very, very smart champion design. Love it. Faithful Renewal, which is her passive. When receiving damage, restores HP equal to 100% of the healing multiplier. When receiving AoE damage, additionally, heals all allies in basic attack range equal to 40% of the healing multiplier. This effect can be triggered only one time every 30 seconds. So her self longevity is going to be amazing. Uh, this is something where I could even see her being used in Dragon. Not this specifically, but this is an additional reason of I could see her being used in Dragon. Uh, the healing multiplier to the hero increases by 20% uh, 
and then 30%. So that's a total of 50%. So when she receives damage and she's fully skilled up, once every 30 seconds, she can heal herself for 150% of her healing multiplier. Then for her allies, which is originally 40%, can scale up to 60% when hit with AoE damage. Rejuvenating Chant. Increases healing on other ground units by 20%. Additionally, her basic attack that heals allies will also apply a self-healing at a rate of 40% of the healing multiplier. So not only is she healing others, now she can heal herself in there, which is just, it's going to be wild. Going to be absolutely wild to play with this champion. Uh, healing multiplier to ground units, plus 3%, uh, plus 6%, plus 10%. So her healing multiplier to ground units goes from 20 to 30%. And then her healing multiplier to herself goes from 40 to 50%. So lots of healing all around on this champion. Her ultimate, Hammer of the Blessing. So originally your base rage cost on this is 1100. That is a very, very long time for an ultimate. I do want to put that out there. But applies a 35% inspiration to other allies at range for 15 seconds. <coughs> this is where she compares to Dolores. This is why she's going to be one of the top rated champions is because she not only has a higher attack stat than Dolores, but she's a legendary champion, meaning that you also have legendary stats to go along with this. And then she's also a defender, which gives you just more flexibility on where you place her However, this could also be a con because sometimes your Dolores does need to be on that platform. So it, you know, it varies, but really, really cool concept here. Her inspiration can uh, scale up to 45% just off of skills alone, which is higher than Dolores unless you awaken Dolores. Um, the effect duration goes from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. I don't remember what Dolores is, is off the top of my head. Uh, we'd have to go look at it. Uh, but yeah, overall, super excited. I will say, I get that she's a defender. However, in this little video here, I do think that Salazar should be in front of her because she's going to be constantly healing up allies in this range. Like, you know, healing up allies in this range. I think having the defender behind Salazar, she'll be healing up Salazar and then whatever tries to get past Salazar will get blocked by her being in the back. And then that condenses them right here so that when Salazar gets done killing what he's killing, he can actually go back and start killing them off as well. Now, this does depend because obviously in this video, they have this giant tentacle head monster. They do do plenty of damage. So I will say <clears throat> there is the consideration that Salazar is no good to you if he's dead. All right, let's go look at Azor's magic resistance. Uh, so that's broke here. So his defense is 23, I'm sorry, his magic resistance is 2357. And I already have forgotten what, what hers is. So 2357, let's go back. Twenty-three fifty-seven. So they made her tied with Azor for the highest magic resistance tank in the game. Uh, I really do love this because this means that she doesn't outshadow Azor, who has a very different kit compared to her. Um, but I am super excited. Muriel is a tank that uh, I absolutely didn't feel like was a super good tank, but it was more of a gear problem. Uh, so for them to do an upgraded version of Muriel... I think is a really smart design. And then I'm super happy that Dolores of all champions finally has something that's going to challenge her one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Because right now, a lot of the game has been, do you have Dolores? And I don't feel like that's been a good design element to the game. It, it also feels like it's really bad strategy for a strategy game. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think. Are you excited about Constance or Alora, or, or is there even an epic that you're like, ooh, I would like to get them. Or, oh, Theowin. I didn't realize he was that good. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like and or subscribe button down below. It helps out a lot. Get to see more of me, so that's always good. Um, if you want to join us over at twitch.tv backslash sprinklebeard. I stream every day, 
uh, Sunday through Wednesday, semi-reliably. This week is Thanksgiving week, so I'm off from work, and that means I get more time to stream. Uh, I will be streaming on Thanksgiving, because I have no plans, and my family lives too far away. Thank you guys very much for watching, and until that next time, ta-ta.